Hello, I'm Dr. Daniel Griffin. And I'm Dixon DuPontier. And today we will be discussing scabies. This is actually one of my favorite topics. If, if, can, I, can I have a favorite topic? You can tell us why it's one of your favorite <laughs> topics. I would like to know that, actually. Um, you know, one of the reasons I think I like scabies so much is, um, I'll say, some of the success that I've um, observed. Okay. There's an organization called Floating Doctors. Yes. And it was started by a gentleman, Ben Labrat. And uh, initially, he formed this organization when there was um, one of the many Haitian crises. Yeah. And I uh, got together with the dream and a bunch of I'll say, fellow dreamers, other people that were wanting to do something. And they ended up with a boat. We somehow got this boat somewhat seaworthy, the Southern Cross, <laughs> filled with medical supplies. And, and this became ultimately an organization called Floating Doctors. Got it. And Floating Doctors um, at this point is now based in Panama. And they have started taking care of a lot of the uh, indigenous population centers throughout wow. the uh, Bocas del Toro archipelago. Nice. And when they first went to some of these um, locations, 15, 20% of the population was infected with scabies. And they introduced um, soap, which you don't really think about, to these communities. They started diagnosing and treating scabies. And now when you go back, and I go and I work with them um, and I do teaching for them. Yes, I do um, know you go down there. You go to these communities and it's a rarity. You might, be darned. let's say you see 100 patients, you might see just a few scabies nice. cases a day. Nice. And when you do see it, it's much less severe. So this is one of those um, situations where um, with not a lot of resources, but with a commitment to be going back, um, some real tremendous strides can be made. Nice. So it's one of those, you know, we have so many times when we say, oh, I can't believe where the world is going. <laughs> I can't believe children these days. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of those where I've really seen some tremendous success and it just uh, it keeps you going to see stuff like this. Yeah, that's terrific. Well, so let's, let's talk about scabies. You bet. Are you starting to feel itchy? You know, just talking about the word scabies makes me think about itches, but no, I'm not getting itchy myself okay. because for many years, as you well know, uh, I taught a medical school course called Parasitic Diseases, and one of my guest lecturers was Dr. Robert Quads, one of the authors of our book, Parasitic Diseases, and he, he liked talking about scabies also. He says it's one of the few diseases you can actually catch by shaking hands with your patient. <laughs> as a way of introducing the subject. But, and then he would go into the more extreme forms of scabies, and we started to talk about some of those with regards to the dermatologic manifestations. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not rare. It is not rare. And, it's, um, it's not rare in the tropics. It's certainly not rare in temperate developed countries as well. Exactly. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on you during the talk and see how many times you scratch just to see if you do become a, and, and the audience too. We're going to see if they start oh, itching. Really? Why would we ever do that? <laughs> well, hopefully this will remind people of one of the biggest symptoms that uh, people with scabies have so, is itchiness yep. or pruritus, severe pruritus. Yeah. And, um, Often it's the mother bringing the child in and saying, my son, he just can't stop scratching. Mm -hmm. And so when we see it in, in children, we're seeing a lot of scratching. Um, in adults, we see it as well. And there's a certain um, peak to the itchiness, which is at night, of course. And so people will come in, patients will come in, individuals will come to be seen. And the chief complaint is often that I'm very itchy or my child is so itchy that they can't stop. Right. Um, and what, what is scabies caused by? You, you mentioned you're a parasitologist. It's caused by Sarcoptes scabiae, of course. Everybody <laughs> knows that. And is, and is that a parasite? <laughs> it's a parasite. It's a, an arachnid. Okay. It has four pairs of legs rather than three. Okay. It lives in the very superficial layers of the skin. It does not penetrate from the epidermis to the dermis. It lives by tunneling its way through almost dead skin. And it's hard to imagine how this organism actually causes itching of the skin. 
because of where it locates. But apparently some of the secretions of the mite um, make contact with the dermal air as well and alert the immune system that something foreign is in their skin. And that reaction results in the itching that you get. And I must also say that Sarcoptes scabii is a parasite of humans only. I think that's an excellent point. It does not affect any other animal species. So if you say, well, are there any pets in your family? Well, there might be, but... It's not going to. You wouldn't have caught this particular entity from a pet. You would catch it from someone else. As somebody someone else. else. Are there other children in your family? <laughs> is one of them your favorite pet child? <laughs> Well, I think that's a good point. So the, the patients are going to come in with the itchiness. Right. They may come in with a rash. Yep. And um, Dixon and I, you know, we, we talk a lot about scabies. I think probably more than the, most people talk about have you scabies. Ever had it? Um, I have never had scabies. And when I tell most people, they are surprised. I would, considering where you go. Considering where I the go. The contact that you have with patients. You would, you would think that I would have at some point when I'm going to communities where one in every seventh person has scabies how do i how do i not get it and, and maybe that's a good thing okay, to point how out do you not get it? well that's i'm gonna tell you <laughs> we're gonna share well, i can hardly wait <laughs> we're gonna share this is very transmissible it, it is, is a highly contagious disease yeah, right. and when you diagnose a patient with this you need to actually start thinking about the fact that you're probably at risk yourself yep. um, particularly when it's a severe manifestation so so scabies, it's a mite, it's an arachnid, it's an ectoparasite that lives in the superficial layers of the skin. It can get to the point that there is so much scabies infection that there's a scabies super infection or what we call crusted or- Norwegian. Norwegian scabies. Norwegian tribute to the researcher who described it, not something that is endemic in Norway. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and in that case, the person can be teeming with these mites. And the cause of that is? Well, it can either be immune suppression okay. or hyperinfection. Okay. So we saw a lot of cases of this. We still see a lot of cases in people whose immune system is um, devastated by the HIV virus. Sure. But we also see this manifestation in children in um, the tropics. Right. And it, it has to do with the tropical okay. locale. It has to do with the amount of infection. It also has to do with access to uh, soap and water, right. ability to clean these areas. But one of the things, and it's going to be one of the treatments, again, when you are treating a patient with scabies, one of the treatments, we might be using a topical cream. Yep. And I always make a point of demonstrating the application of the topical cream <laughs> and, and getting, a, a, getting oh, a large oh, amount right. of it all over my hands oh, in the process. Got it. So, okay. You're that's called good barrier medicine. By the way. <laughs> um, but we should talk a little bit about how do we make the diagnosis. So someone comes in, and first we're going to talk about patterns. Um, Dixon, you're familiar with um, this type of scabies we see in New York City, and, and how would you how would you describe that? Well, most of the common scabies that I've heard about, because I, I too have not had scabies, okay, nor it's... have I swathed a, an enormous amount of ointment over my hands to avoid it. <laughs> um, the scabies that I'm used to hearing about are in uh, children that come into the uh, outpatient clinic, at, either at Columbia or at the other medical schools around the, in mm -hmm. the city. Yeah. And it's primarily infection in between the, the, the fingers and the webbing of the fingers, as they like to say. But heavier infections, as you were describing, the mites can be found in other places besides there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can affect other areas of your body if you have an enormous number of mites to deal with to begin with. Mm -hmm. But the ones that I'm used to hearing about are in between the webbings of the fingers. Whereas, again, I, I want to say that this is only true for urban settings in the non-tropical world. The location of the rash which they could find on the, the back or the, no, the knees or perhaps on the abdomen, does not reflect where the three or four mites per finger might be. So those yeah. are the, that's a mild yeah. infection with scabies, but I know there are many exceptions. No, and I think that that's, um, that's great because that was how I was first introduced to sure. scabies. I trained on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, yep. and we would see scabies on a fairly regular basis yes. in individuals that yep. um, are without a home, maybe living on the street. Yeah. Um, and it would be finding um, the burrows, finding the brown lines, um, 
having them scratch between the fingers. In that situation, the mite burden is usually relatively low, Correct. but the inflammatory response might be exuberant and they might actually have right. a symmetrical rash as you described. Yeah, so that's, that's right. they're itchy, but where, where the money is, so to speak, <laughs> where you're gonna find the mites is gonna be in the, in the webs. Right. When I first started going to the tropics, to uh, these areas outside the temperate climbs, I ran into a, a totally different presentation oh, of wow. scabies. And um, in our parasitic disease textbook, we show pictures of where we tend to see the mite manifestation in the temperate climates. Yep. But when you go to the tropics, you start seeing significant involvement of the buttocks really? and scalp. I'll be darned. And one of the, one of the things that, that I've been, you will talk about in diagnosis, but I've been using a dermoscope to confirm All in right. these cases, because for me, this was different than the original I had been taught. So I think the things to realize is that scabies in temperate climate, low infection scabies is gonna be mostly in the webs and we may see an inflammatory um, associated rash in non-affected areas. When you go to um, the tropics, you might see different distributions or I will say you will see different distributions. You'll see um, involvement of the scalp, yeah. involvement of the buttocks. Um, you will also find um, lots of children affected um, there'll be little sort of dots that you're seeing from the lesions. Um, so, so the diagnosis can be a little bit um, different patterns as far as the visual recognition. Right. Um, and then the next is how do we, how do we confirm? Because it is nice to confirm. Sure. Um, one of the things is that you can actually do scrapings. Yep. And sometimes you can, under the microscope, see the mites, uh -huh. which is, I think, quite exciting. That is exciting. Um, dermoscopy allows you to see in and you can see the brown burrows and you can see these chevron shapes that um, actually are the you're actually seeing the mites in the skin um, so it's pretty I, I think it's pretty pretty exciting to be able to confirm it oh, once you've confirmed it um, with these little delta wing chevrons or your scrapings or you're just confident with the pattern and the manifestations um, then we can talk about treatment sure and I think I alluded a little bit to a topical cream approach. You did, you did. The, uh, the, the application What's of a... What's in that cream? It's, so it's permethrin. Pyrethrin. So it's per... So not pyrethrin, but permethrin. 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 It's a 1% permethrin cream that we recommend. And you actually apply this to the whole body, which you can think at a small child is, you know, reasonable. Once you get into an adult, that's a lot of permethrin cream. I'll say. So um, in some of the times when I've gone where we're bringing medicines with us, you could have a large amount of permethrin you need to bring with you, particularly right. to a village where 15% of the population For is children. infected. Yeah, that's right. Right, so it could be, um, and you put it on, you leave it on, like go to bed, you leave it on for eight to 14 hours, and then you rinse it off the next day. Um, this sounds a little bit easier than it might be in some of these areas where water is pretty limited. And the idea of you're gonna take a shower, you're gonna rinse it, how are you gonna rinse this off? You're gonna have to, swim in the water if there is water perhaps, to swim in perhaps maybe the water's not so sometimes that can be a little more challenging than it seems right and then you're going to want to repeat this a week or two later oh my. and some of these villages you might go to there might be you know you're getting the scabies burden down in the community but there's going to be a reinfection when the incidence is so right. high right in addition to topical and severe cases or where it's incredibly widely distributed we might use ivermectin tablets. And again, we would do the same approach where you do the ivermectin and then you're gonna repeat it. So you might be killing more than one bird with one stone. <laughs> the iver, as we, as we know from our parasitic disease knowledge, ivermectin is not, it's not just for scabies. Nope. I think that was like a commercial. Ivermectin is not just for scabies. It's true. Um, but it does um, work quite well on scabies. Yeah. And particularly when you think about, you know, a, a 70, 80 kilogram adults, exactly. um, trying to cover them with permethrin no question. can be quite something. Yep. Um, and, you, and, the, and the ivermectin you can actually use in, um, in children. Um, again, it's gonna be weight-based and then there's gonna be a repeat. And a lot of times when we go to areas where there's a very high incidence of scabies, we might assume that if the child is infected, that the family is infected. So we may even think about treating the whole family right. yep. um, because otherwise you're gonna be passing it around. Right. So what's the active ingredient in quell? We have always used the 
the commercial term quell. Yeah, so so quell or lindane was one of our lindane. older. Lindane one of our, is not a good yeah, it was one of our older treatments. And um, the reason, one of the reasons we stopped doing it is as a neurotoxicity. Yeah. And so from side effects, we've moved away from. Um, but still, every so often, I've heard people wanting to use it because they learned that 20 years ago in school. No, of course. Of so, course. but yeah, so we've moved on. And then they forgot how to read. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, you did well, not scratching. I didn't scratch one little part. Okay. But I'm dying to. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you for uh, joining us again today. Yeah, we'll see you again.